So in this demonstration, we're going to show you how to work with a file picker and process the results from it. So we'll drop a file picker on the page, and then below it, we'll drop a table. And our goal is in the table to show the files that were picked in the file picker. So for the table, you would need to define a, an array that would contain the data. We're going to start by defining a type, and we'll call it a file type. It's going to be an object. And in the object, we're going to add specific fields for the name and another field for the size of the file. And you can choose, of course, the type for each one of those. So now that we have the type, the next thing is to define a variable that is based on this type. We're going to go to the variables and we're going to use an array data provider or an ADP, as we like to call it, to store our files. So let's define this one. We'll pick array data provider. And the next thing is just to set the type of the objects in there to the file type we just defined. Then we can indicate, for example, that the key attribute is the name of a file. All right, so now we have the array data provider. We can take the table and bind the table to our array data provider. Once we bound the data source, we can then go over here and pick which columns we want to show from this data source, we're going to show both columns. And this is the first part of connecting the dots. Next thing we're going to do is on the file picker, there's an event. And the event is called selected files. It's going to fire up when we select a file. And it's going to pass in an input parameter of the files. So let me show you what happens when you run the application. We're going to run the application. When the page comes up, we're going to open the developer tools and we're going to look at the console just to see what information we're getting from this section of choosing files. So we'll choose some files here, click open, and you can see in the console the uh, information that is being passed. So you can ignore this arrow right now because we didn't do anything. Here is the information that is being passed. It's an array with two rows. Each one has this file object in it. I want to manipulate this object a little bit to construct something that is more similar to what I need. So to do that, I'm going to pick up a JS function. Uh, basically call a JavaScript function over here. We're going to create a new function at our page. Call it, for example, parse files. And into this function, in the arguments, we're going to pass in the argument of the files that have been picked. So this is something that we get from our action chain. Now let's go over to our JavaScript, and we're going to uh, code a little bit of JavaScript here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a new variable. I'm going to call it the myFiles variable, and it's going to be an empty array. Next thing, we're going to use a for loop, so we can use the code template here, switch it to run on i, and run over the argument 1 that we're getting in. Then what we want to do with each row is we want to construct our own object and push it into the my files array. So we're going to use the my files push method, and we're going to push in um, an object with a specific structure that has two fields. So the fields that we defined were name, okay, so name colon, and then the other thing was size. Um, so by the way, for from the row, we want the name over here as the value and the size, again, colon. And we can use arg1, uh, specifically the record in the i position, and then the size. And so one more thing we need to do is surround this, of course, with uh, curly brackets, because this is an object. So let's go over and put those in the beginning and the closing. So this one allows us to create a new object in our array with those specific fields. At the end of this loop, we're going to return the my files as the results from our JavaScript function. All right, let's go back to our action chain now. After we call this JavaScript function, we get the results. We can assign the results over to our ADP. So click the assign variable pick up the results from our function, expand the ADP. We're going to push this array into the data array. We would want to uh, reset the value to empty. So every time we are starting with an empty array before we push values in, 
and click finish. And that's it. If you now go back to your page, switch over to live mode, click the file selector and select some files from your machine, click open, you'll see the results in the table below.